Relationship management can be one of the most trickiest experiences that we have as we go through life. And so this video is all about the top 10 things that you should never share with other people. I'm big on keeping your own counsel. This is something that I share with my clients all the time. Keep your own counsel. There is nothing more powerful than really learning to trust yourself and to be able to go within and to ask yourself questions and to get guidance and to get direction and to get answers. Because here's the thing, there's nothing more fickle than a human being. Most people are going through life having their own challenges, they have their own problems, they're going through their own personal experiences in their lives, in every area of their life, and obviously that comes into the business world, it can, it's unavoidable. So if you can really cultivate this super strong relationship with yourself, where you learn to keep your own counsel above all else, I can promise you that all of your relationships will shift. And furthermore, you'll begin to realize just truly how powerful and how resourceful you are. So here I have it for you today, the top 10 things to keep private. And then I have a bonus for you at the end. So stay with me. My name is Deborah Peters. Thank you for visiting my channel. I appreciate you being here. And if you like this content, give me a thumbs up. Definitely share this around your team. And um, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. There's a bell next to the subscribe button. If you hit that, then when I upload new content, you'll get a little notice and you can jump on here and you can grab some new tools to experience a greater level of fulfillment and joy and to reach your goals easier in life and in business. Okay, so let's get started. So the top 10 things that you should keep private. So number one is your biggest goals. Yes, there's nothing worse than sharing your goals with people that aren't able to support that bigness, that largeness. And if you're seeking to live a larger life, then you really need to learn to keep these private. Listen, it's not that people don't support you. It's not that your friends, your family, your colleagues aren't positive, supportive people. It has nothing to do with that. What you have to realize is that we all have sort of like this self-talk in the back of our mind and it can be what's called the critical voice or the critical parent that is fault finding in what's wrong with us. And we live in a society that is based on this notion that there's things that are wrong, there's things you need to be afraid of, there's just things you can't do. You know, in society's rules, there's just things that you should not expect to have or be or experience, whatever that is for you, because every paradigm has its own benchmarks. So if you're sharing your goals with people that don't think that large, or maybe they have that critical voice going on that is being, they're being hard on themselves in that moment or on that day or just in general in their lives, then that's going to be the feedback that they give you. And it's very disheartening. You know, there's nothing more disheartening than sharing these big, amazing goals with someone and then having them not respond in an enthusiastic way. Sometimes it's not so much that they say something negative. It's just that they can't acknowledge with enthusiasm how amazing it is for you to be going after this goal. The other issue is that when we share and we talk about our goals with other people, then what happens is we get that endorphin high from talking about it, especially when other people are celebrating with us. They're like, woohoo, you're going for it. 
And that can actually deter you from, from taking action and getting the high off of taking steps forward. So it's really important that you keep this internal. If you want to share your goals with someone, share them with yourself out loud. So take some time in the morning, do some mirror work, look into the mirror, talk to yourself, congratulate yourself, and tell yourself about your goals. You should be your own best friend. All right, so that's number one. Number two is all the good stuff that you do in the world. Now, there's kind of a fine line with this. So I understand sometimes we're hanging out with friends or we're out for dinner with a colleague or maybe we're out for dinner with a new client. There's a fine line between sharing the stuff that you do on a volunteer level or the way you give back to the world or humanity or, or, or the earth or whatever your cause is and, and bragging. So it's okay to share, you know, from an experiential place of, yeah, I'm involved with this organization and this is what we do and this is what I get out of it. Like I get all this good feeling, I, I'm happy, I feel like I'm contributing to something greater, or I make amazing friends, I meet amazing people, or I see people doing better in their lives as a result of what it is that we're contributing. Coming from that authentic place is totally fine. But if you're doing it like it's um, some kind of a bragging right, then I think it just isn't gonna sit well with other people. So that's something that, depending on the delivery always, I would think through before I share that a lot. And then of course the context and the person that you're sharing it with. And what's, what are you looking? <laughs> You know, always begin with the end in mind. What are you looking to get out of that share? Like basically, what's the reason for you sharing that? Next is your personal life. Keep some mystique about yourself. Keep things tight, you know, hold your cards close to your chest. The world doesn't need to know about your personal life. Of course, you know, you might have a close friend or two I think there's a saying that, you know, if you have one really good friend through life, you're doing good. So I think it's okay occasionally to, in the appropriate moment, to share something about yourself, especially if you know unequivocally that that person that you're sharing with is going to be able to give you the feedback and the support that you need on that issue. Otherwise, again, keep your cards close to your chest, keep your own counsel, keep your personal life out of whatever it is that you've got going on in the business world, especially. Don't talk about your personal relationships or your personal life with your business colleagues, particularly if you're triggered and you just need to spout off, you know, go for a power walk or something and burn off the energy that way instead of talking about what's going on in your personal life. Next is your wealth or lack thereof. You don't need to be telling the world how wealthy you are. You don't need to be bragging about that from a place of self-importance. I would, you know, just keep that to yourself because a lot of people get weird around money, let's face it. Some people just, even the best intended people, when they see someone else thriving, they could get jealous and they could think, well, you know how, how we can make excuses in our mind about how, if someone else is doing something that we would like to do, but then maybe we don't think that we can do it then we make excuses about, oh, well, it's easy for them, you know, they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth or they inherited all that money, you know, it's easy for them, what do they know about struggle? So it's important to just keep your wealth to yourself. And if when you start talking to people that are high net worth and ultra high net worth, you'll know that they do that. They're just like some of the wealthiest people in the world you would never know it because they show up with with no bling and they're just like on the down low, totally dressed down, 
and they're not showy at all. So kind of think like that, all right? And especially if you don't have money, keep that out of the conversation. You know, don't talk about how limited you are. Never, ever, ever say, I can't afford it. Don't ever utter those words because then you just, it's energy. You know, every word we speak is energy. And when you're speaking these words into existence, then you're speaking that experience into existence. So never say, I can't afford it. Stop talking about how much money you don't have. And please, whatever you do, don't tell people that you know you would do things if you could afford it or if you had the money or it must be nice like change all of that rhetoric because you're actually creating your reality through that whole process and it just perpetuates the problem even longer unnecessarily all right next is your life philosophy so the way I look at this is, again, it, it, it needs to be handled hmm, with brevity, shall we say, and it's all contextual. Where are you? Who are you with? What's the environment? What's the level of conversation? And what do you want to get out of it? If you're a coach or if you're finding that something is really working for you and you want to share that with the world, pay attention to people's body language and calibrate off of that feedback that you're getting non-verbally from you because people will send you non-verbal clues as to whether they're able to roll with what you're talking about. Now, if you're okay with rattling people's cages and stirring things up, then by all means, go for it. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I think once in a while, it's a good idea to kind of stir the pot and get some, some new thinking going on. But if you're in an environment where people are starting to react in a, in a negative way and they can't really handle what you're saying, you just might want to consider if it's worth it or not. And so it's up to you. But calibrate off of the nonverbal behavior and, and then definitely roll your dialogue and your beliefs out and your philosophy out accordingly. We all, we all get to be the script writer and the architect of our reality, right? All right, next is family problems. So Lordy knows that I've had my fair share of family problems and I think that this is something that I've learned the hard way and I share it here today and I share it with my clients because it gives you um, some benefit from my experience like why would you want to go through what I've gone through and I really feel like that's the whole point of my coaching is I've gone through a lot in my life. I've had some really significant challenges and some, some up and down patterns in life. So I understand patterning in a really deep way. And so what I have found is that with family problems, when you talk about your family problems to people, you know, judgments are made, uh, you open yourself up to criticism, and then I think most importantly that you want to avoid is that people start sharing their family problems. And now you've, you're starting to go down this negative spiral of talking about problems. And the last thing we need in the world is to talk about more problems. So if you're having problems with your family, you know, just realize this. Family members are people too. And they have their own points of view, they have their own perceptions of reality, and they have their own models of the world. So whether they see things the same way as you do is irrelevant. I always default to what you think of me is none of my business. And so you might want to adopt that and actually put that into play in your life, especially where it comes to family. Next is romantic relationship details ay yay ay nothing worse than someone that's talking about the person they're dating 
married to, in love with, you know, you know what it is when you go out for social with the girls and your girls are talking about their man and how he's this and how he's that and then, or their husband, right? And then sooner or later, that relationship heals and it gets better. And so guess what all of your friends remember, ladies? They remember how you talked about your man and all of his shortcomings. And they just can't understand how you could possibly still be with that guy. So you really want to be careful about that. And guys, it's the same thing. You know, if you're out with your guy friends, having a beer, a couple cocktails, you're at the game, and you're talking about how your woman you know, browbeats you or won't let you out of the house or won't let you do things. I mean, you're just seriously making yourself look like a fool. So clean that up and don't talk about your relationship, your romantic relationship details. And definitely never talk about what happens in your intimate life because nobody needs to know that ever. Trust me. Uh, next is other people's secrets. Hey, you know what? When someone confides in you, you really want to look at that as being the ultimate compliment. And so keep that. You know, there are things that I know about people and clients that will go with me to my grave. And that's really how I'd like you to look at secrets especially if you've been involved with somebody and then that relationship comes to a close, whether it's a romantic relationship or a business partner or a client, you know, just never talk about it because there's a reason it's called a secret, all right? Keep that thing under lock and key, which kind of goes back to the whole point of this, this entire video of why you shouldn't be sharing things with people. Don't open yourself up for people to have ammunition to go talk about you to other people because when people are in a weak moment and they're triggered or they're feeling emotional or whatever's going on with them then you become that topic of conversation and nobody needs that added negative energy all right next is your fears and weaknesses there's so many reasons why you don't want to talk about your fears and weaknesses first of all the more you talk about something you're afraid of, the bigger it becomes. The more you talk about this weakness, this perceived weakness that you have, the more weak you become. It's like you suck the life force right out of your entire existence. And you know, there's a lot of conversation about energy vampires and being around people that suck your energy. You, you can suck your own energy just by talking about your fears and weaknesses. So if you're with people and you're talking about going and doing an activity, let's say you're talking about going and doing an activity that would challenge you, then don't talk about how that makes you afraid. Like just look at it from, stay inside and look at it from a point of view of, wow, this could really grow me. So how could I embrace this as an opportunity? And then talk, it, talk about it from a positive perspective, if you're gonna make any comment at all, which you don't have to feel obligated to. You could just be listening and observing, feel what's going on inside your gut, feel what's going on inside your body, because that will always tell you what this, means to you and if there's a trigger there if there's something that's being activated on a mental or an emotional level then deal with it you know make a point to to actually clear that within yourself by connecting with yourself and meditation in the morning and alignment is always the best tool for that and it's free right next is resentments about the past so I'm gonna do an entire video on forgiveness. I've been, I've been really looking at this in a very deep way on a personal level and also because I have some clients that are going through some experiences in their companies 
they're family run businesses and there's a lot going on. The dynamic is pretty diverse and pretty deep. And so holding on to these resentments and, and past experiences just like really drags that negative emotion into the present time. And when you have negative emotion in present time, it just, man, it just feeds off itself. You know, it just becomes like this hideous kind of vibe that, that brings everybody down and blocks growth and blocks success. So definitely be willing to forgive and forgiveness can be something as easy as just deciding not to think about the wrongs anymore. You know, just decide not to let your mind wander over into what they did wrong or how they wronged you or how they took advantage of you. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that these things haven't happened or that they haven't had a negative impact on your life. Absolutely. I get it. I understand. We're human beings. Relationship dynamics can be very interesting. So... I understand that you might have that going on, but just decide, you know, not to think about it anymore. Like get up in the morning tomorrow and just say to yourself, you know what, today I'm only focusing on the blessings in my life. So maybe you can't yet find the blessing in the past experience with someone that was hurtful. Eventually you'll get there, I promise you. It's a journey, but yes, you will get there. But until you get there, just focus on the good stuff that you have going on. And if you say to me, well, I don't have any good stuff going on right now, like everything is just really hard, then focus on what you're creating that's good. You see where I'm going with this? You are the architect and the creator of your reality, and you have complete and total power over all of it. And I just want to really want to encourage you to just do this for yourself. All right. Now, those are the top 10. So we've got biggest goals. Keep those to yourself. Good deeds. Mm, you know, it's all in context, right? Your personal life. Keep yourself a bit of a mystery. You know, let people work to figure you out. Next is your wealth or lack thereof. Um, your life philosophy, you know, and again, everything's contextual and it depends on the environment and it depends on what you want out of it. What do you want out of the outcome of that sharing to be? Okay. Um, family problems, keep those on the low down and definitely all your romantic details. Nobody needs to know what's going on between the sheets and nobody needs to know what a cad your man is or what a control freak your woman is like nobody needs to know that stuff keep it to yourself and besides at the end of the day if your buttons are being pushed by that other person then it's all about you, you know, we have this saying in neuroscience and it goes like this if something someone says or does pushes your buttons, then that's information about you. Because everything a person says or does is information about them. But when what they say or do pushes your buttons, that's information about you. Okay, and next is other people's secrets. Not, a, not even if someone's holding a gun to your head. <laughs> I'm joking, but you understand what I'm saying to you. Like, keep those under lock and key. Next is fears and weaknesses. You don't need to talk about those. You just, it's enough dealing with them inside your own head, much less sharing them with people and talking about them. And then of course, resentments about the past, be willing to forgive and let it go. Now, my bonus is your talents. It's okay when you're having a dialogue with people to let people know that you take ownership of your gifts and talents, but really just be them, you know, just be them, just live them. 
and express them in everything you do, in everything you say. So if you're a great communicator, then, and that's a talent of yours, then just be a great communicator, all right? So there you go. Those are the top 10 things that you want to keep on the lowdown. And my number one advice to you is keep your own counsel. And so if that's uh, what you're learning right now, if that's your learning curve, then practice, 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 practice. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you again soon. This is Deborah Peters. Have a blessed day. Bye.